Now, here's the other thing. It's also known as the hidden day. The Feast of Trumpets is known as the hidden day. Why is it known as the hidden day? Because it's a new moon. The moon is hidden. <laughs> Hello. It's the hidden day because it is the new moon where the moon is completely hidden but a slight sliver. Listen to Isaiah 26, verse 20 and 21. God says, come, my people, enter into your chambers, shut the doors, hide yourself as if it were for a little moment until the indignation is past. Behold, the Lord is coming out of his place to punish all the inhabitants of the earth because of their iniquity. The earth also will disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. That is telling you, here we are. We're to be hidden in that day. But guess what else? The earth will no longer cover its slain because it is on that new moon, that day of Rosh Hashanah, that the resurrection of the dead takes place. And then God punishes all the inhabitants of the earth. Now, look at Zephaniah 2, 1 through 4. Gather yourselves together, gather together, O nation not desired. Now look at this. This is crazy. Before the decree bring forth, before the day passes the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, seek you the Lord, all you meek of the earth, which have brought his judgment. This is Mishpati, or this is Shoftim. This, I think it's amazing how this part ties into today's Torah portion. Seek righteousness. That's what it said. Pursue righteousness this morning. Seek meekness. It may be you'll be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. How many of you want to be hidden? How many of you, when you were a kid and dad got mad, you said, I'm out of here. <laughs> That's the way, uh oh, I'm gone. Well, guess what? God said he wants you to be hidden before the day of his anger comes down. Wow. Guess what? is also known as the time of Jacob's trouble. Where do we get that from? This is why I give you notes with all these Bible verses. So you don't think this is my theology, my philosophy. I just want to give you what the Bible says. You can put it in your pipe and smoke it however you want. Okay? Look at this. Jeremiah 30, verse 6 and 7. Ask now and see whether a man travails with child. Why do I see every man with his hands on his loins? As a woman in travail, and all the faces are turned to paleness, for that day is great. None is like it. It is even what? The time of Jacob's trouble. But he still, still will be saved out of it. Look at Daniel 12, 1 and 2. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be what? A Time of trouble, such as never been since it was a nation till that time. But at that time, your people will be delivered. Everyone whose name is found written in the book. This is why Rosh Hashanah next week I'll talk about is also the day of the opening of the books. God's going to decide who's going to live and who's going to die. And it says, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall what? Because they're going to hear the alarm go off. Some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Look at Psalm 27, 5. In the time of trouble, he will do what? Hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He will set me on a rock. And just as we just got done reading about why is every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail. It is a time that is also known as the birth pangs of the Messiah, as when a woman is in pain about to give birth. Look at Isaiah 26, 17. Like as a woman with child that draws near the time of her delivery is in pain and cries out in her pain, so have we been in your sight, O Lord. Isaiah 13, 6 through 8. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it'll come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, every man's heart will melt, they'll be afraid, pangs and sorrows will take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travails, they'll be amazed one at another and their faces shall be as flames. When it refers to pangs, it's always referring to childbirth. 
Look at Matthew 24, 7 and 8. A nation will rise against a nation. And we know that's not true. Uh, it really means an ethnic group will rise against an ethnic group, which can happen within one nation. It's the next phrase, kingdom against kingdom, which we would translate as nation against nation. But there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The Greek word for sorrows is birth pangs. That's what it's referring to. What else do we know? You see these grapes here? Passover is the harvest of what crop? Barley. Shavuot or Pentecost is the harvest of what crop? And the fall feast is the what crop? Grapes or fruit, the fruit harvest, the grapes in particular. All right. Well, here's the thing. If you look at Ruth 2, 23, she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of the barley harvest, end of the wheat harvest. She dwelt with her mother-in-law. That means she worked through Passover all the way to Pentecost. So she's working the spring harvest and the summer harvest, right? But look at this. In Revelation 14, 18, another angel comes out from the altar, which had the power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle. And he says, thrust in your sharp, sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. This tells you it is the fall feast that this event happens. It didn't say wheat. It didn't say barley. It said grapes. Just like Passover was fulfilled at Passover, Pentecost was fulfilled at Pentecost. The full feast will be fulfilled during the fall feast. You don't look for things to happen in April that are supposed to happen in September or October. You following me? I mean, people don't go to Alaska in the winter. They go to Hawaii. They go to Alaska in the summer. I mean, we need to know God's calendar so we know what is going on. Look at Revelation 17, 5. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the abomination of the earth. Okay, so here in Revelation, this talks about the mother of all harlots, right? Well, now, let's look at Matthew Chapter 20, verse 1. I just kind of put that in your mind. I'm going to give you, I'm going to plant some seeds here. And in just a minute, it's all going to go boom and be very fruitful. Matthew 20, verse 1. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man who's a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard. In other words, if you're going to hire laborers, you need to have some money. Okay, you got to have money if you're going to hire them. Now look at Matthew 20, verse 1, that same chat, or verse 11, the end of that story, it says, when they had received their money, they murmured against the good man of the house. Okay, they were all murmuring because the people who labored all day got paid the same as the one who labored one hour. Everyone remember that story? Everyone got money, and there were murmurs, and they complained against the good man of the house. Who is the good man of the house? God. Yeshua, however you want to look at it. He's the good man of the house. Put that in your mind. God, good man of the house. Okay. Now, let's look at Matthew 25, verse 14 and 15. Now the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man who's traveling into a far country. I can't help but think of Yeshua. Left heaven, came to earth. Now he's going away from earth back to heaven. And it says he called his servants and he delivered to them his goods one, he gave five talents, another two, and to another one, to every man according to their ability, and straightway he did what? Okay, so here, he's got servants. He gives one ten and one five and one one, and he tells, here's the bag of money. I want you to go put it to work, right? So who is the good man of the house? Who is the one who went on a far journey? Who's the one that has the bag of money with him? God. Okay. Now, let's look what happened, what the harlot of Proverbs 7 says to the foolish man when he's trying, she's trying to get him seduced. Look at what she says in Proverbs 7, verse 19 and 20. 
The good man is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. He's taken a bag of money with them. He will come home at the day appointed. This is specifically referring to the book of Revelation and the Gospels. Do you see the connection between the good man at the house who's gone on a long journey and has a bag of money with him? These gospel verses here, if you believe in replacement theology, you're never going to connect that back to the Proverbs chapter 7, which also applies to the seventh month. Okay, now, when you hear the word day appointed, what do you think of? The Moedim. The appointed times or the feast at appointed times. You can't keep Passover on Tishri 2. Passover's on Nisan 14. You following me? Unleavened bread is Nisan 15. Okay, Rosh Hashanah is Tishri 1. Yom Kippur is Tishri 10. Sukkot is Tishri 15. These are the appointed times. Even every new moon, every new moon, the first of every month is a appointed time. Okay, the devil even knows Messiah will return on a feast day. He's no dummy. He, he knows right here. Okay, there are different translations of this verse. English is never the best translation. I've gone over that in this replacement theology, but I'm going to show you something. Here this says... He's gone on a long journey, bag of money with him. He'll come home at the day appointed. But look at the verse underneath that. It's the same verse from a different translation. For the man is not in his house. He's gone on a long journey. A bag of money is taken in his hand, and he comes back at the day of the new moon. What? He comes back at the day of the new moon. He comes to his house. That is telling you Messiah is going to come back on Rosh Hashanah. That's the new moon. Now, again, we don't set dates. We don't know what year. But if he fulfilled Passover on Passover, unleavened bread on unleavened bread, Pente first fruits on first fruits, Pentecost on Pentecost, he's going to fulfill Rosh Hashanah on what day? Rosh Hashanah. History one. Exactly, which is Yom Teruah. Okay, now this is so important. So there's something I want to show you here. There, the Jews forever have had uh, sayings for Yom Teruah. How many days is it from the first of Tishri to the tenth of Tishri? Oh, you guys are good. Okay. That's why it's known as the 10 days of repentance. Aseret, Yimei, Teshuvah. Okay, that's the 10 days of repentance. Now, guess what else? So here we are. Remember the thief in the night that is coming. Okay, well, how many of you know the Bible says he comes as a thief in the night? You're going to find he comes as a thief in the night to the foolish virgins, the evil servants, the blind church, the dead church. He's not to come to you as a thief in the night. All the Christians believe that because their pastor has their head in the sand just like they do. Look at this. Let's look again at the Bible and let's look at it in context. Revelation 3, 1 through 3. He's speaking to the angel of the church in Sardis. And he said, right, these things saith he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name that you've lived, but you are what? He's speaking to the dead church. And to the dead church, he says, you better be watching and strengthen that which remains and are ready to die. I've not found your works perfect. Remember, therefore, how you received and heard and hold fast and repent. If you don't watch, I will come on you as a thief and you won't know what hour I will come upon you. So when he says he comes as a thief, it is to the dead church. Look at Revelation 3, 17 and 18. He's speaking to the church of Laodicea. Because you say I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, but you don't know you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. I counsel you to buy me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich 
and white raiment that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness doesn't appear. Anoint your eyes with eye salve that you can see that you don't have clothes on. We'll look at Revelation 16, 15. I come as a what? Blessed is he that watching and keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So he's speaking to the blind church. He comes as a thief in the night. There was a captain of the temple guard who was known as the thief in the night because he would come to see if the temple priest that was supposed to be watching if he was asleep. So we find he comes as a thief in the night to the dead church, to the blind church. Now let's look at Matthew 25, 8 through 13. Here's a wise and foolish versions. And the foolish said to the wise, give us your oil. Our lamps have gone out. But the wise said, no way, lest there's not enough for all of us. You go to those that sell and buy for yourself. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Those that were ready went with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he said, I don't know you. And then he says, to the foolish virgins, watch therefore, for you don't know the day or the hour when the Son of Man comes. They're the ones who don't know the day. Look at Luke 12, 37 through 41. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, will find them what? And what day are we supposed to be watching? Heir of Rosh Hashanah. Okay, that's when we're supposed to be watching. It says, I tell you, he will gird himself and make them to sit down to eat and will come forth and serve them. And if he comes in the second or the third and finds them, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he what? He wouldn't be sleeping. And not have suffered his house to be broken through. So be ready also for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you don't think. And then Peter said, okay, you're speaking that parable to us or somebody else. <laughs> and the Lord says, okay. In verse 42 through 46, who is the faithful and wise steward? Whom his Lord will make ruler over his house to give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I tell you, he will make him ruler over all that he has. But, and if, that servant says in his heart, Oh, my Lord's delaying is coming. And he begins to beat the men servants and the maidens to eat and drink and be drunken. The Lord of who? That servant will come in a day when he's not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware. And he'll cut him asunder and he gets to have this portion with the unbelievers. What portion did they get? Do you want to be a portion with believers that go through the tribulation? Okay. Matthew 16, 3. In the morning... You say it'll be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the times. We need to know the signs of the times. Matter of fact, look at Luke 19, 41, 42, and verse 44. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If only you had known, at least in this your day, the things which belong to your peace, but now they are hid from your eyes. And shall lay you even with the ground, your children with you, and they will not leave one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Now, look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 5. But of the times and seasons, and what is he referring to here? Not winter, spring, summer, fall. He's referring to the biblical calendar, the festivals. He says, I don't need to write you because like the Colossians, you're keeping the feasts. He says, you know perfectly well that the day of the Lord comes as what? A thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes on them as to veil upon a woman with child, they'll not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. What is the next feast to be fulfilled? And when will it be fulfilled? Rosh Hashanah, Tishri 1. I'm telling you, can you imagine? And what you have to understand, Moses' tabernacle was patterned after the tabernacle in heaven. All the feasts are patterned after the feasts that are going on in heaven at the same time. I believe every year on the Feast of Trumpets, all the angels practice 
Rosh Hashanah, blowing the shofars, reading the Psalms, uh, practicing. And that on earth, we're to be the echo, okay? The response going back at that same moment. And some year on Rosh Hashanah, when we're shouting and proclaiming him as king, all of a sudden we'll be joining the heavenly choir at that very moment. Because we'll be watching, we'll be aware, but the whole world, it'll come upon them in a moment and they won't have any idea. Think about this for a minute. Here is pictures from the Maui fire. Well, what did you hear? It came in a moment. They, there was like nothing they could do. Here's the cars. that They were jumping into the ocean to escape. They had nowhere to go. But guess what? Some people were prepared. They were already on the water saving people from drowning. Do we want to be aware and be out on the boat getting ready? Or do we want to be those who had no clue and then are running for their lives because God says it's going to happen like that? They didn't have time. The time is coming when we here, just like in Maui, are not going to have time. You can't wait and say, okay, save me, Jesus. It ain't going to work. As a matter of fact, I've got a little video here. I'm going to have Jill play of uh, people who survived this. Go ahead. And um, so people ran for the beach. They had no option. There are, I mean, there are cars with the doors still open of people just running. And there are bodies on the street. Um, and this is 20 feet from the ocean. That's how quickly the fire was. Um, the people that were able to jump in to the ocean, that's what the Coast Guard wasn't able to get in shallow enough. And so we were able to get this 10 foot skiff in, in the middle of the night in the smoke. And it was just explosions going off, hundreds and hundreds of explosions. And we were able to grab two very small children and then bring them out to the, into the Coast Guard vessel that was waiting outside the reef. And we keep hearing explosions. We were hearing screams out of a horror movie. Yeah. You know, we didn't know. We were here, people were throwing up. We didn't know where they were. The smoke was, it was keep getting all black. And then, you know, I called the cops again. They couldn't come. The third time I called them, they said, you have to go in the water. And I said, you want us to jump in the hurricane? It's black, you know. The ocean was pulling us at the same time. We we're trying to have debris falling on us. We we're trying to get wet and not burn. How long were you in the water for before you were rescued? Like three hours, maybe? Yeah, something like that. about three. Yeah. It sounds miraculous that you were able to survive i didn't think so. i just prayed and i said god please not today i i i didn't know what to say i was this is it you know i, did I didn't the, want, i did the know. same thing i was like when i was on my back in the water going i was like not today god not you know just not today not like this this is what is coming guys on a worldwide scale and if you think you're going to have time to get ready, you're not going to have time to get ready. There will be no time to get ready. This is going to happen in the twinkling of an eye, the spur of the moment. we got to get ready now. The month of the lull is the month to get ready, get prepared. So uh, I just really pray that each and every one of us has our heart ready. This could be the year. This Rosh Hashanah. That is why I want you to give all the free calendars away I'm giving you to everybody, all of your loved ones, because to this coming Rosh Hashanah, which is the last day of the Jubilee year, could very well be the day that the tribulation starts. And it's going to come like that, and everyone's going to be shocked that it's here. But we got to be prepared. Th that is why I just pray the Spirit of God just moves mightily on this day of judgment, realizing this is real. This, just like the Maui fires, this wasn't a movie. This was real. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Spirit of God is going to come in a moment. Uh, the tribulation is going to come in a moment. And only those that have ears to hear are going to be ready. With that said, let's stand. <laughs>